This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We've got a pair of title fights lined up for USC 304, which is coming up on Saturday. And it's time to break it all down from a betting perspective, letting you know the best bets on the board at FanDuel Sportsbook by talking to Austin Swaim. Austin joins us here today to break down his thoughts on the two title matches and top money lines and props for Saturday's card. This is Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor at FanDuel Research, joined here as mentioned by Austin Swain. You can find him on X at Swain 3 Find his work over at FanDuel Research. Austin, a delight to have you on the show for today on your birthday, no less. Happy birthday. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Jim. Um, when this card was announced, UFC 304, it was July 27th. Obviously, you kind of notice the days around your birthday. I noticed that we had heavyweight interim title, welterweight title fight that's been a long time in the making. So what a better birthday present I could have gotten from UFC than this card. So I'm super jazzed about it. And I can't wait to dive in and break some of these down with you. Is there a birthday narrative for better? It's going to like, you know, we talk about birthday narratives. <laughs> I'd mostly joke about it. Like, you know, if it's a golfer's birthday or a batter's birthday, oh, you know, it's a joke typically. Yeah. Do we perform better as betters around our birthday or no? I, I can at least off memory say that I have been profitable my last two UFC birthday cards. So maybe okay. there is a birthday trend narrative that we can okay. keep building on here today. All right, I'm into that. <laughs> birthday narrative and play here for Austin. So we'll break down his thoughts on uh, what he's seeing across UFC 304 in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Ramping things up as we get closer to NFL season and college football season. So a lot of good stuff coming your way across August and, of course, in September as well. To get those shows as they are posted, make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. And if you like what you hear, leave us a a five-star rating and review as well. Of course, these shows are on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV Plus as well. If you watch another FanDuel YouTube page, hit subscribe there. Leave us a thumbs up as well. The dog days are here in the coolest place to get in on the MLB action is FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a booster bonus daily. That's right. There is something for everyone every day, all summer long. You can score bigger winnings in any inning with profit boosts, snag bonus bets or home runs every Tuesday, even beat the heat with no sweat bets. So head over to FanDuel and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Must be 18 plus in D.C. and 21 plus in present and select states. Opt-in required. Wager requirements apply. Bonuses awarded as now withdrawal, but bonus bets or profit boost tokens. Restrictions apply, including bonus expiration. See terms and conditions at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, D.C., Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Vermont, Virginia, and Wyoming. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat, Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y in New York. Let's dig in now, Austin, to USC 304, and let's begin things with the first title fight on the card, because there are two. We'll go chronological order here, talk, or beginning with Aspinall versus Blades. And in this one, Aspinall is the big favorite. Uh, minus 420 is the money line right there against Curtis Blades. How do you see this fight playing out, Austin? Yeah, it's um, certainly when you have a title fight, you hope for a line a little closer than this. I very rarely see value on a minus 420 money line in UFC just because when you bake in injury and historical upset rates. But I've got Aspinall at minus 225 here, which is pretty decent conviction, 69.3% likely to win. I actually put him in a parlay way back in June because I was kind of anticipating this was going to balloon as we got closer to this. I just can't get to Blades, even though my model here says that he's value at plus 310. I think he's just at a huge 
huge disadvantage in both phases of this fight. Aspinall, especially in the striking room, he's coming off a knockout win to win this interim title over Sergei Pavlovich. Quick knockout, plus 4.95 striking success rate, best ranking, best marks in the ranking, striking accuracy in defense. So you could say Tom Aspinall is the best striker in the division, but he also has 100% takedown accuracy and defense. So Pretty darn good wrestler, elite jujitsu, 1.7 submission attempts per 15. He'd get my vote for best pound for pound fighter in all of UFC. I have a hard time seeing where Curtis Blades wins with this attack. Like he's a good wrestler, 5.72 takedowns per 15 minutes. But if Aspinall has, he'd be the first guy to take Aspinall down. And can he do it over and over again and sustain that pace? Like um, I tweeted earlier this week, I think he's up, you know what, Greek with no paddle this week. <laughs> finding a way to beat Tom Aspinall. So I think Aspinall does get it done here, even though my model baking in some heavyweight variants doesn't love this money line. Um, I did find an angle that I am a little different from the market, and I really do like backing here. Okay, so we're not taking the money line on Blades. You said there is value elsewhere. So wh where is that value? What's your favorite bet for this first title match? So I'm just kind of... so. When you look at how Aspinall's market breaks down, he's his money line's minus 420. He's inside the distance. He was minus 320 at last check. Um, so if you go to the double chance prop, I'm not sure what it is now. It could be even higher as this thing continues to go to seemingly Mars. But um, it, So knockout or submission, it's minus 310. Okay, So he's most likely to win inside the distance. I'm split on the layout that FanDuel has if you go to the method of victory tab. Knockout or submission. FanDuel believes a knockout is minus 155. Submission is plus 4. 480. I'm a little bit different on those marks. I've got knockout at minus 115, submission plus 365. So I'm a little bit closer than FanDuel is, even though I'm not even seeing value on the money line. But I think the submission prop is undervalued here. And it checks out with how I see this fight playing now. I said Curtis Blades is a great wrestler. He's certainly going to try. Aspinall has great jujitsu and takedown defense. I even said this on my show that I do uh, with Matt Tanner with the Home of Fight YouTube channel. I think that a front choke is very live here because Blades is going to get desperate. He's going to look for wrestling attempts. And Aspinall has awesome chokes, including front chokes like Dar's chokes um, and guillotine chokes and all the like there. So I like Aspinall submission plus 480. Obviously, this is not a full unit type of dart here, but I do think it's undervalued relative to the knockout prop. Okay, so that again is in the Method of Victory tab at FanDuel Sportsbook. Aspinall to win by submission, plus 480 over Curtis Blades in the first title match of the card. Second title match is the headliner here. Leon Edwards taking on Bilal Muhammad. Slightly closer money line for this one, as mm -hmm. we've got Edwards at minus 265, Muhammad at plus 210. So what's your top-down view of this match here, Austin? Yeah, it's we've actually seen these guys get in the octagon before since the COVID break. Unfortunately, it was ended in the second round due to an eye poke. Well, Muhammad couldn't continue, couldn't see, so we had a no contest situation there. Um, we, we, in that first round, Leon Edwards had a good first round. He definitely won it, and I think that was to kind of be anticipated as Baloo Muhammad is more of a grinder that builds throughout the fight, whereas Edwards probably the fresher guy out of the gate. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the dynamic here. You look at Edwards, both of these guys can really do it all in some capacity. Edwards has elite Muay Thai on the feet. Not super high volume, but he even landed a takedown on Kamaru Usman. He landed two on Colby Covington. I feel good about his jiu-jitsu. So Edwards is a great athlete who can do everything. But Balou Muhammad is an interesting challenge, and I think he's got the best combination of defense here in the welterweight division. 57% striking defense, 93% takedown defense, best in the entire division, minimum five fights. So he's hard to get down like as far as a level change. And on the feet, it's an activity difference. Muhammad lands over, uh, uh, over two significant strikes more, I should say almost two significant strikes more per minute. I think over a 25 minute where this fight's heavily favored to go the distance, Blue Muhammad is going to be the volume guy. Edwards might land cleaner shots. I see this as a pretty darn close fight, and it wasn't surprising that my model kind of checks out with how I see it going anecdotally. So you're seeing a close fight here, and the market does not reflect that right now. With Muhammad sitting at mm -hmm. plus 210. So when you look at the markets here, any bets stand out to you as being the best way to exploit what you're seeing with Muhammad? Yeah, so I definitely think Muhammad's money line is in play here. I've got Edwards a much lower favorite, closer to like minus 150 in that realm. I do think he should be favored. He's the better athlete. Uh, obviously, he's the English guy in Manchester, so USC didn't want to give him a too disadvantageous spot, but he just doesn't really separate through the course of the fights. We saw that against Colby Covington, where his striking differential, it was like, it, it was about 12. It was just, he didn't separate, even though he was the much better striker, even was the better takedown artist in that fight. And Muhammad is busy. And 
and he's got elite cardio. He's been training with Habib Nurmagomedov for this camp, so I think he's leaning into the right sort of approach. I endorse Muhammad's money line at plus 210, but if you go to a method of victory, I think decision makes plenty of sense. My model has this fight 81.1% likely to go the distance. That backs up welterweight trends here. 13 of the last 16 welterweight title fights have gone the distance. So um, I feel like length is on the menu. Muhammad by points plus 340. I kind of prefer a play on his money line just because um, – you get all sorts of outcomes. It's a 25 minute fight. I think Muhammad has a big endurance advantage. Who knows if that means he wilts Edwards at some point late in the fight. Um, FanDuel has an alternate prop as well. If you kind of want to attack this angle in a different way, if you go to the round props, alternate round betting, uh, Muhammad by round four, five or decision. So instead of a plus three forty decision outcome, um, if you get all three of those rounds together, it's plus two ninety. So there are a lot of different ways to attack this sort of fight. If you want to just tie them all together, and by the way, some some people may not have access to a book that has these advanced props, so below Muhammad Moneyline is probably there, plus 210, gets a stamp of approval from me. Okay, that is the Muhammad money line is at plus 210. Muhammad by points is plus 340. And the other one Austin mentioned is Muhammad uh, in round four, five, or by decision. That is plus 290 at FanDuel Sportsbook. If you're betting just one Austin, let's say you have expo- you have ability to bet any of these, mm-hmm. would it be the Muhammad money line just to get all those outcomes? Or how would you play things if you have all these options at your disposal? Y- yes, so I placed my primary action on below Muhammad's money line, and then I, and I sprinkled for a half unit. I sprinkled the decision prop at plus three, you know, plus three forty or whatever it is, just because I do think it would come via the cards. Muhammad hasn't had a win by finish in his last 10. Oh, he has one win by finish in his last 10 fights. I should say he's not a super finish finisher. Finish indicators aren't very high either. Never any career knockdowns, just 0.5 submission attempts for 15 minutes. I have no idea how blue Muhammad would finish Edwards if it happens, but you know, with crazier things have happened, we've seen Leon on the other side of that. I I just think Mohammed's in a great position here. And I one thing I had written down in my notes that I want to tell you, I think he's a little underrated because he's just kind of unorthodox. You know, like Chris Sale in baseball, he looks kind of funky. <laughs> Blue Muhammad's striking style looks kind of funky. I think it bothers folks, but like he's effective, especially when is you it, get to the Is statue. he punching with like a W stance like like Chris Sale does? Like is it a full <laughs> W with his like his back or no? I, I don't think so. I think it's just um it, his his boxing combinations are definitely a little bit clumsy it doesn't look like as pretty as edwards but um it's effective and like the guy is willing to put himself in the fire and provide pressure i'm i'm a big fan of his style i'm a big fan of his style we need a bean pole um a bean pole weight class of (laughs) ufc just like long lanky dudes like chris sale facing someone like this has been incepted now and i'll give you like you know 70 percent commission on this idea i'm not gonna like steal your idea but I, i want the bean pole um weight class for UFC at some point. Okay, yeah. so the two bets Austin is liking for the two title fights. Muhammad, money line plus 210. Muhammad, by points, plus 340. And then the Tom Aspinall by submission, plus 480. All those available at FanDuel Sportsbook. Plenty of other fights available on this card, though, Austin. Which of the money lines stand out to you for UFC 304? Yeah, so I'm going to turn to the early prelims, and this fight was not on the early prelims as we began the week. It's kind of gotten bumped down to be buried on the card, which is a little concerning as Muhammad Makayev and Manel Kopp square off because Manel Kopp has missed weight three times in UFC. In fact, he hasn't weighed in yet as we sit here live recording this on Friday morning. And I don't know if Manel Kopp's going to make weight in this fight, and that might be why this line has moved and the fight itself has moved to a more con- hidden place on the card. But I think if this fight happens and Kopp does make weight through this fight, he is a tough fight for Muhammad Makayev. I like his money line at plus 136. I've actually got him a slight favorite here at 50.5% to win. And when I check out how Muhammad Makayev has performed recently, it does make sense. Kopp has a really excellent 77% takedown defense, and Makayev in his first top 10 matchup only landed three of 20 takedowns. He was super inefficient against Alex Perez back in March. It was this kind of underwhelming performance where I guess based on activity, he had to get the win, but it was not any sort of statement. Whereas Manel Kopp is a guy that can make a statement. 1.42% knockdown rate, big time power, over five significant strikes per minute. We've seen striking over grappling favored in MMA scoring criteria for the last couple of years. It's kind of transitioned to a more literal definition of the scoring criteria. That favors Kopp here as well if held to now he's on enemy soil Muhammad Makaya flies the UK flag cop um 
definitely not uh, not definitely not a UK guy. I actually forget what his country what his native country is. Like he actually came over and fought in Japan a lot regionally, but he's not Japanese. Um, I'm gonna get the country wrong, so I'm not gonna say it. Um, but Manel Cop here, I I it's think Mangola. that he's a, he's Angola. Yeah, I knew I was gonna get it wrong. I was yeah. I don't know why I was thinking like um I I. I I, maybe I had South Sudan on the brain because of the USA, sure. U, the USA men's basketball exhibition, but I, I was going to guess. But I was going to guess wrong anyway. Take Manel Cop <laughs> on the money line here. I, I think knockout and decision are both plausible outcomes, so the, the money line package here is a good idea. Actually, uh, I, I see Portugal today. now. So uh, I'm confused, can, man. <laughs> conflicting reports of where Manel Cop uh, fights from. I see Portugal. I see Angola. You pick, man. Um, either way, Austin <laughs> on is targeting – the cop money line that is plus 136. Again, assuming this fight is on, which we don't know yet for sure, but uh, Austin is on the cop money line plus 136. Any other money lines you like for this card? Yeah, absolutely. And this was the first bet that I put in this week. I think it's another prelim gem where the line is maybe a little bit inefficient here. Marching Prashio and Modestus Bukowski is two doors down on the prelims here. I think it's a difference in optics. Modestus Bukowski is ripped, he's 6'3. You can tell he's physically taller. And the dude's name is the Baltic Gladiator. You're going to bet against the Baltic Gladiator? I get it with the Bukowskis chalk here, but the reality is Marcin Prachnio, maybe a little frumpy, larger ears, definitely a more effective fighter, though, and that's all my model cares about, and that's what I care about. Plus 2.31 striking success rate compared to a negative 0.59 for Bukowskis, so he's nearly three significant strikes ahead per minute when it comes to landing. Prachnio has been vulnerable to power in the past. Bukowskis has zero career knockdowns. Prachnio has been vulnerable to takedowns in the past. Bukowskis has never landed one in a seven-fight UFC career. So I don't think Bukowskis actually brings the weapons that typically bother Prachnio. I see this as a fight going the distance that takes place in the striking room for a majority of the time. And with that the case, Prashino is just a more efficient dude. I like him at plus 122. I also like his decision at plus 320 when I've got this fight over 82% likely to see its full distance. Okay. Uh, Billy Bean smiles. You call a fighter frumpy and then pick him. Um, <laughs> so he is he is full money ball version here. Doesn't yep. have to look pretty if it works. Yep. But Marcin Prachnio, plus 122 uh, in that matchup is where Austin's seeing value on that money line. Any props you like across UFC 304, Austin? Yeah, absolutely. So as we get to the featured prelim, um, we're kind of scrolling down and moving in order here. Uh, Nathaniel Wood taking on Daniel Pineda. Wood actually the largest favorite on the card at minus 500. Um, it is odd to me that as a method of victory that his most obvious outcome to me is a decision prop. Um, and for reasons I'll get to, it's not even the shortest outcome on Fandom Sportsbook anymore. But Nathaniel Wood by points plus 230. Nathaniel Wood isn't just a finisher, and it's not even his results that I'm looking at. I'm also looking at his finish indicators. Has just a 0.26% knockdown rate. Hasn't secured a hasn't secured a knockout at featherweight since he moved up in weight, and just 0.5 submission attempts per 15 minutes. So I, more than anyone, looking at the spreadsheet, can tell Daniel Pineda is a defensive liability. He's got poor takedown defense. He has just a 48% striking defense. Like there are a lot of ways where this guy could get finished, but Nathaniel Wood's smaller for this weight class at five six doesn't really have a lot of tools to finish fights. He's gone the distance in his last four wins at featherweight. I think Nathaniel Wood by points is good value here at plus 230. My model's got it closer to like plus 150. So that's my shortest outcome by a mile compared to points or uh, or knockout or submission. I like points here. I like distance and length, even though that's not Pineda's career trend, but I don't see how Wood bothers him with any sort of tools like power, submission, danger. So if he doesn't have those tools, why is he such a big favorite? I mean, this is explain yeah. this to like me as a UFC new. Yeah, it's a great question. It's a great question. So Wood may not have power, which is what you would need to end a fight via knockout. He may not yeah. have submission danger, but he does have he's elite striker plus 1.69 striking success rate to negative 0.09 for Pineda. And Wood lands almost two takedowns per 15 minutes. So he can control time in this fight with his wrestling. He should be landing at distance at a higher clip, which will help him win points on the scorecards, but as far as actually getting Pineda out of there, especially since Pineda coming off a decision against a similar type of archetype of fighter in Alex Caceres, I think Pineda can last all 15. He's actually lasted all 15 and four of his last five losses. So I really feel good about uh, Daniel Pineda um, it, making it the entire distance, even though I expect him to be behind. Okay, so that is Nathaniel Wood by points, plus 230 at FanDuel Sportsbook against Daniel Pineda. Any other props you like across this card, Austin? 
Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick on the prelims here. I I just kind of found more betting value on it this week than the main card. Molly McCann taking on Bruno Brazil, but this is a good one to end with because uh, it was a little bit down. Um, Oops, <laughs> all good. Um, so Molly McCann taking on Bruno Brazil. Um, if if you open up Molly, it's a good one to end on because there's a theme of English favorites this week. We have a ton of them. Nathaniel Wood qualifies. Tom Aspinall qualifies. Elsewhere on the card, Mick Park and Sam Patterson. Leon Edwards would even fit that description. You're kind of accepting or rejecting is this a favorable spot that UFC has put forward for the hometown fighter? Here's Molly McCann in her home city of Manchester. So it goes even further than just fighting in London or in England. I think this is an incredibly favorable matchup for McCann, who is a seven-time UFC winner. Bruna Brazil's just two and two at the promotion. Both of her wins over ladies that don't have a win of their own. So it's an entirely different plane of competition level. And Molly McCann has her covered wherever this fight goes. Plus 0.85 striking success rate. Brazil nearly negative one at this point. And then one 1.82 takedowns per 15 when Brazil's got a 53% takedown defense. So not only do I expect McCann to win minutes similar to how I was describing with Wood, but she does have the tools to finish. In fact, all, all the last four fights she's had in England finished inside the distance. It's kind of a deviation from normal trends here at women's straw weight. She got a submission in her last fight, had a couple of knockouts at a, at a larger weight class at 125. I think she's got power. I think she's got submission danger. So if you scroll down and go to the double chance odds, Jim, which is how you bet inside the distance props on FanDuel, um, this this line actually shortened a good deal since I saw it yesterday. It was plus 165. Now McCann by TKO or submission plus 150. I really like McCann inside the distance here. I think she gets it done in pretty short order when we've seen Brazil already finish in the second round by inferior competition. Okay. Hometown narrative. We br- It comes back to the narrative. We got it there eventually. Uh, not just the birthday narrative for Austin, but also Molly McCann hometown narrative to win by knockout or submission plus 150 at FanDuel Sportsbook as she takes on Bruna Brasil. That's all we got for UFC 304. Should be a pretty fun card. Excited to get things popping for tomorrow. If you want to find Austin on Twitter, check him out at aswain3. Find his work over at FanDuel Research. We'll have a full betting guide up later on today. FanDuel.com slash research for that. But Austin, appreciate the time for today. Happy birthday. Enjoy your birthday. Enjoy the card. And we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate it. I definitely will. Alrighty, and again, you find Austin on X at Aceway 3 I'm on X at Jim Sonis. You can find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Enjoy UFC 304. Enjoy your weekend. We'll talk to you once again next week. This has been Covering the Spread, a FanDuel Research podcast. <laughs>